I'm Tim Herrera with the Sacramento County Office of Education here with another Teacher of the Year profile. We're speaking with Jill Warner, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Center Joint Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us where you teach and, and what you teach. I teach at Oak Hill Elementary School in the Center Unified School District. I currently teach kindergarten in the morning and in the afternoon I'm the lead teacher, so I help in the office. I help the principal since we don't have a vice principal currently. Um, I have been teaching at Oak Hill for the last 15 years um, and I've taught a, taught a variety of grade levels. I've taught fifth and third and a two, three combo and I've taught kindergarten for the last few years. Hmm. So what does it mean to you to be named as a teacher of the year? I'm very honored to be named the teachers of, teacher of the year. Um, this is, I have been named teacher of the year at my school. This is my second time, but my first oh. time as the district teacher of the year. And I feel honored that my peers and um, uh, value my teaching and I feel honored that the district recognizes my teaching and has made me the district teacher of the year. Mm -hmm. So you teach kindergarten. Yes. Which for a lot of kids is their first introduction into school. Yes. Uh, like I said, I've taught different grade levels, but kindergarten I feel is very important. It is a child and sometimes a parent's first introdu introduction to the public school system. So you need to make it a positive one so that they may consider this, that this could be their lifelong, and it, you know, it's their introduction to their lifelong learning um, or, or relationship with the school system. So it's very important to make it a positive one for the students and the parents. So let's talk about that. I mean, you know, for, for the students, um, you know, it's kind of a challenge for those, those ones who've never really held a pencil the right way. Yes. or stood in line the right way and right. so you ha you're teaching not only the academics but the socialization part yes. too so there's a balance. In a kindergarten class uh, I would say maybe half have had some sort of school ex school experience or, or, or daycare experience or preschool experience mm -hmm. and half have never even been in a school setting. So not only are you teaching them um, uh, the ABCs and one two threes you're also teaching them how to sit and how to listen um, uh, when they can use the restroom um, to wash their hands. A lot of learning goes on in kindergarten. I think the one reason that I like teaching kindergarten so much is, is that I do see, you see the learning so quickly with these guys. With the upper grades, you'd have to grade test or maybe wait for state um, test scores to be returned to you. Uh, with these guys, you know, every day is a learning process. One day they don't know how to hold a pencil, the next day they can write their name. Um, so it is very exciting to teach kindergarten. And so what about you, you spoke of the parents too, and if it's their first um, exposure to uh, a school system. And you know, what's it like trying to not only uh, comfort the parent while you're comforting the child too, but also you know, letting the parent know that this is a safe place and you know, this is a good thing. And also, we'd like you to be involved. Right, you need to be friendly and respectful. I think that parents of, uh, want to be listened to. So their concerns may be very minor, they be, may, may be very large, but they want to know that the teacher cares about what they have to say and is listening. I have an open door policy. I'll, you know, I meet with them before, after school, through email, notes, whatever, interpreter sometimes, mm -hmm. so they know that I um, care about their child. Um, if, I, if I have a warm environment in my classroom and I have a positive environment around the parents, um, then everybody will have a more trusting relationship with the school. Mm -hmm. And that's really what matters. If you're going to send your child off to this place, um, they want to know that their child is going to be safe and that their child is going to benefit from the experience. Explain the importance of that uh, parent-teacher relationship and how it's so vital to a child's success. Well, um, parents are very important. Um, all of the children come from different settings and we don't really know always what's going on at home, but we need to find out what's going on at home. We need to build a relationship with the parents so that um, they know that we want the best for the child. Um, parents um, what, parents, you know, ha are come in all shapes and sizes and everything mm -hmm. and so as a teacher it's my job to be able to identify with each of them and build a relationship with each of them on whatever level that is. 
um, besides the teacher, the parent is a very crucial, in of course, in a child's development. And so it's it's and a lot of times the teacher, the excuse me, the children will call me mom. You know, they accidentally they call me mom, and probably at home they accidentally call their mom Mrs. Warner. <laughs> I mean, because in, especially at these young ages, it's it's um, such a uh, uh, the relationship is so combined and we need to um, work together to make sure that the child gets what they need out of their education. Mm -hmm. So how many years have you taught? I've taught in center for 15 years. In total? Uh, total I'd say like 20, over 20. I've taught, I substitute taught for a number of years. I taught at a private school for one year and I taught in the Peace Corps for two years in Estonia. Mm -hmm. So explain, uh, well let's talk about Estonia for a second. What was that like? What was that experience like? It was one of the best experiences of my life. I lived in a Russian um, city on the border. I could actually see Russia from my window. <laughs> and um, it, was a, it was not long after um, it, Estonia became its own country. They were still, still fearful of Russia and probably still are today. Um, it was a very high poverty town, high unemployment. Um, I didn't go out at night, um, but they so wanted to learn English because they knew that English was their way mm -hmm. to a better life. Uh, it's a very small country, and so um, they knew that English, they could, if they spoke English, they could build relationships with, you know, neighboring countries like Finland or, um, or Norway or Sweden, and so they were very eager to learn, but they also had a very interesting, you know, um, view on Americans, you know, so it was kind of a culture shock for me, too, to kind of understand how they thought about Americans and how we've thought about Russians. Um, also, it gave me a better understanding. I was the different one, you know, what it's like not to be able to speak the language, what it's like to live in a uh, very poor in city, um, so it, it enlightened me into a lot of things, I think, that make me, has made it um, able for me to better understand some of my parents and where they're coming from. My school has a high um, rate of English language learners and has a high rate of free and reduced, students that receive free and reduced lunch. So I think all of that, the experience kind of gave me a, just an eye opening. And to be away from your home for two years, you know, I, mm -hmm. um, I read a lot of books. But it was hard, but it was also, like I said, one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. And what have you carried from that learning experience to what you do today? I think part of it, as I just said previously, is a better understanding of people and what people go through. Um, I, I grew up in a college town. My father was a college professor. I wasn't necessarily privileged, because college professors don't make a lot of money, but I grew up in an academic environment. Well, this, these people that I work with in Estonia and some of the people I work with in my school setting now haven't had that opportunity. And, um, but that doesn't mean that they don't want the best for their children or they don't want to move on to the next level, their children to go to college or in Estonia, their children to learn English. Um, so I think it gave me an opening just for the diversity of the world and how really what everybody wants is their children to do well. And it's my job as a teacher to help that happen. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to you to be a Teacher of the Year? Um, like I said, I'm honored to be selected the Teacher of the Year. Um, to know that you're representing some great teachers in your district, too. I'm yes, I'm representing great teachers in the district. At the, at the county level, I'm there rep representing a lot of great teachers within our county. And I think it's wonderful that we do um, acknowledge that there's a lot of great teachers out there. And there'll be some teachers that weren't acknowledged that probably sh should have been acknowledged. But you know, we open up the newspaper. You know, frequently there'll be a some sort of article, um, um, not speaking positively about teachers or the teaching profession. So these uh, times when we can um, give ourselves a pat on the back, um, or get, have someone else give us a pat on the back, it makes what we do worthwhile, mm. so or you, more worthwhile. More worthwhile. So you would encourage anybody who want, considers being a teacher to give it a try and look into it. Um, no, I would Tell not encourage why. anybody. Um, Teaching takes a lot of compassion. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication. Um, even though you know people say, "Oh, you got you know two months off in the summer. Oh, lucky you." Mm. Well, I don't know very many teachers who just sit around during the summer. Usually, them they are preparing their lessons for next year, improving them, making them better. I've spent the last week in my classroom 
um, you know, putting up posters and preparing for the new year. It's, to be a teacher, you have to want to serve. And if you aren't really dedicated to, to serving others, I don't think teaching is the career for you. Because it takes, like I said, a lot of hard work and dedication, a lot of um, uh, second guessing yourself in that. If I go in and teach a lesson and none of my students get it, well then I have to go home and figure out what I did. It's not the students, it's, it's me. What did I, I, how can I improve my lessons so tomorrow my little guys will understand whatever it is I'm teaching. So it, it takes a lot of reflection and like I said, um, the hard work. It is hard work. Well, thank you for your hard work. We've been thank speaking you. with Jill Warner, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Center Joint Unified School District. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.